in a black man with respect. That's how you become a godly woman. You agree with that, my sister? You agree? Come on, just uh, stay for, for a couple. Stay for a couple. Because what we're teaching is that the Bible has a solution for everything. Right. The Bible has a solution for single parent households, baby moms all over the place, baby fathers, men don't want to take care of their women. Women want to bark up against the man. Right. The Bible has all the solutions for that. We think it's just a, a slave master book. It's not a slave master book. It's not a, a fairy tale book. Right. This is truth. This is order. That's right. This is what's going to fix the black community. This is the one thing that all our leaders lacked. Right. Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King. The one thing that they lacked was the truth of the Bible. That's right. But guess what? Being that we're speaking the truth now, the Holy Spirit came upon us, and guess what? We're gonna fix up the black community right before the oppressor's eyes. That's right. You understand that my sisters will read that. Read from the top. First Timothy chapter two and verse nine. So now this is this is a New Testament, right? We're reading the New Testament. You know. And like manner also. And like manner also. That women. That women. So we're not talking about all women, it's talking about a particular nation of women. Right. Blacks and Hispanics, all you see on this sign right here. So read that again. And like men also, that women, that women, adore the themselves. Judite, the Judite woman, the Benjamite woman, the Levite woman, the Ephraimite woman, that women of the nation of Israel do what? Adorn themselves. Love themselves. In modest apparel. So my sister, what is modest apparel? That modest. <laughs> is that modest apparel right there you see? Covered, right? Not having your behind out. Right. Not having your, your, your behind out for everybody to see. Right. That's not modest apparel. But it says what? That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. But God says the woman must adorn themselves in modest apparel. So for example, my sister, what you're wearing is not modest apparel. That means modest apparel, you gotta be covered up. Like you can't be showing your, your legs, you can't be showing your thighs, you can't be showing your behind, your breasts. That's not modest apparel. And guess what? That simple law right there will fix so much in the black community. Right. Because what are men gonna lust after? Because men usually lust after what? The body. That's right. And guess what? Because they only want your body, they don't wanna take care of you. They, and then when, when, they, when they breed you with a baby, they don't wanna take care of that baby. Right. They on to the next woman, and the next one, and the next one. And guess what? That goes off a generation. This is why, you see today? This is why we're like this today. Right. This is why the black community is in shambles That's right. today. Because of this law right here. And this law right here is not just the black man, it's also the black woman. The black woman gotta take accountability as well because he's supposed to be a support to the black man. That's right. And all that he does. What do you think the white woman do? The white woman supports the white man in everything that they do. Right. So it's time for the black, it's time for the black woman to what? To be in a rightful God-given role. That's right. right. So keep reading. And sobriety and with, with shamefacedness. With shamefacedness. Now, my sister, what is shamefacedness? You don't know what shamefacedness? All right, I'm gonna give you an example. Give me, hold back, give me Proverbs 9, verse 13. Yes, sir. Bro, I'm gonna give me Proverbs 9 verse 13. So I'm gonna give you a, a scripture right here. And I wanna see if you can put it together. If this is shame face or not. Read that. 9 13. Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 13. Uh-huh. A foolish woman is clamorous. Is what? Clamorous. You know? She is simple and no if nothing. So clamorous is like it's being loud. Disrespectful. If, a shit, if God said for us, for the woman, to be godly, are they supposed to be loud and disrespectful? So what is shame faces? Exactly, being respectful, being right. quiet, humble. Exactly, That's not right. barking up against the man. But what do you see? You see the woman going up against the man that provides for you. The reason why you got a roof over your head is because of him. And even if you might have a better job than him, he's still the man of the household. Bring it out. But black women don't understand that. The white woman understands that perfectly. But how come we 
as a nation of people don't understand that. That's true too. But that'll mean you move from your role as a woman. Bring it out. Right, and then guess what? God will take care of that. God will take care of that. Are you familiar with the Bible? Are you familiar with Abigail and the ball? Abigail was a righteous woman. She was she was beautiful and she had wisdom. But the ball, the word the ball means foolish. He was a foolish man. But that don't mean Abigail moved from her God-given role as a wife to him, even though he's a foolish man. And what happened? God eventually dealt with him. Bring it out. God eventually put him to death. So just because you might be with a a, a, a bad man, don't mean God's not going to not going to deal with it. But you got to make sure that you are doing what you are doing as a woman to what? To still be you know, to, to still obey that man. Give me First Peter three verse one. Mhm, mm mhm, mm mhm. Mm Watch it, because the, the Bible has everything, sister. All your questions. Come forth with all your questions. The Bible is going to answer it. All right? Read that. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3 and verse 1. Likewise, ye wives. Likewise. So why does it say likewise? Give me chapter 2. I think it's verse 11 or 17. Why, is the Bible, why does the Bible start off with likewise? 2, 2 17, that's what I want. Verse 18. Verse 18. 1 Peter, chapter 2 and 18. Servants. Be subject to your masters. So these servants are referring to our own people. For example, if a brother is poor, right? And my, I, I have a house. I say, look, yo, you need to get yourself together. Or you could um, work for me until you get yourself together. That's the servants and the masters. I'm not talking about the white man and slaves. That's not what it's talking about. The white man taught it like that to manipulate us, but that's not what it's talking about. Just like a home attendant, you might have a, a home attendant or a maid. It's the same thing. So read that. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear. Uh-huh. Not only to the good and gentle. So some servants are gonna have good and gentle bosses or masters, right? A brother might be good and gentle, right? Read on. But not only to the good and gentle, but also to the forward. But also to those that's rough, that deal with you harshly. You still gotta obey that master. So now go to chapter three and one. First Peter chapter three, verse one. Likewise, likewise. ye wives. So it says likewise who? Ye wives. So what is it comparing from what we read before to a wife? The husband is her who? Huh? Her master. Bring it out. Her Lord. Her Christ. Her mess. So that's why it says likewise, meaning what? Likewise, you women, you're gonna have, so, some of your women gonna have a good husband, a, a, a good and gentle husband. Some of you are gonna have a husband that may deal with you a little harshly, but you still gotta obey him. Keep reading. Be in subjection to your own husband. So likewise, these wives do what? Be in subjection to your own husband. Some black women don't like that right there. Be in subjection to your own husbands. That's what the Bible says. Right. It's not our words, it's what Christ says. Read on. That if any obey not the word. So you may have a husband that doesn't obey the word of God. Read on. They also may without the word. Be it, meaning they may also, your husband may also be without the word of God. Be one by the conversation. Be won over. Be won over. He can be converted to the word of God by who? By the conversation of the wives. So, you play a role in that too. Even if he is not obeying the word of God, you have to play your role as a wife and do what? Be that part again? Be won over by the conversation of the wives. The conversation of the woman. And how you have to be? Humble, respectful, shamefaced, submissive, even though he may not know the word, that's how you still gotta be. So even you might have, even though the man's not doing what he's doing, that don't mean black women gotta now move away from their God-given role. Right. Can't do that, that's out of order. Keep reading. 
While they behold your chase conversation, while your husband behold how you're speaking to him, how you're treating him, like, damn, she never treat me like this. Read on. Coupled with fear. Uh-huh. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and the wearing of gold. So now a lot of women we like they like to adorn themselves with all the jewelry, everything. But inside your mind is filthy. Inside your mind is filthy. You know a whole bunch of evil in your mind, but you're even adorn yourself all these beautiful things. God Christ says, not don't let your main focus be an outward appearance of plating of your hair. The, the jewelry, but what? But let it be the hidden man of the heart, uh -huh. and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek, of a who? A meek, a meek, and quiet, and quiet spirit. Spirit, my sister, do you see meek and quiet black women in our abundance in today's age? If you was to put a percentage of meek and quiet, submissive black women today. What would, you, what would be your percentage? Like how much? Huh? Less than 50%. Less than 50%. Exactly. Exactly. You spoke very well. Exactly. Because actually, give me um, give me. What's that? What's that say? Sirach chapter thirteen and verse fifteen. Because you like you just said that because of the way women dress, they can attract certain types of men. That's according to the Bible as well. Watch this. Sirach chapter thirteen and verse fifteen. Every beast loveth his life. Every beast so. Every animal loves its life, right? Read on. And every man loveth his neighbor. Every man loveth his neighbor. Read on. All flesh consorted according to kind. All flesh consorted according to their kind. Read on. And a man, a man will cleave to his like. A man will cleave to his like. So if a man like hoes, guess what? If a woman dressed like one, he is going to what? Be attracted by that. And that's who you are, and that's who you gonna attract. So if you if you, if you dress covered up, if you dress modestly, who are you gonna attract? Man with a right man with ha, that has some sort of a right mindset and that has morals. You understand? Of course. Give me Deuteronomy twenty two and five. Of course. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Yes, sir. So this gotcha. is the law right here. Deuteronomy chapter 22, and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth to a man. What do men wear that women are not supposed to wear? What do men wear? Exactly, shorts and pants. Men wear that. Women are not supposed to wear that. Skirts and dresses, exactly. What were we picking cotton and slavery with pants on? No, we was in your, your great grandmother. What were they wearing? Dresses and skirts, right? Because women are not meant to wear pants. That's what the white woman taught. And with the white woman teaching that, guess what? They taught as well. You don't got to obey the man because you have the pants. You wear the pants in the house. You heard that? You wear the pants in the house, so guess what? That shows you that what? You're trying to be in that head position, that head roll over the man. But it's a spirit that comes with women wearing pants. That's what a lot of us don't understand. 
a spirit comes with that, but keep reading, we're gonna get that. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Either, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. How would you look at a, a, a brother wearing a dress? Right, how, how you look at it? Filthy, disgusted? You can't judge? Yeah. Where you get that from? The same Bible that you read it. Okay, okay, okay. alright, let me ask you a question. Because I said that, remember I said earlier, you can't dress immodest, right? Was I just judging you? I was. So, well, I didn't feel that way. No, I, I ex ex like, exactly. Like, you, you go and bake in the Bible, and me, I'm a religious person, so I understand. Right, so. so I'm not gonna, oh my God, you coming after me. I know what right, exactly. Saying. So it's the same thing. Like people don't, men, I, don't, I don't think men be reading the Bible for them because they don't know what they be doing. No, I'm, I know, but this is, it's the same thing with what the Bible, it's what the Bible said. Men are not supposed to wear dresses. That's right. I'm, it's, it's, it's judging. But I, I'm, it's not me coming at you, it's what the Bible says. That's right. I'm just reading the Bible and explaining it. But at the end of the day, it's God's word. Right. And God, and we don't, you know what people say? Only God could judge you. Right, God is judging you because what? It's his word. That's right. <laughs> That's it. So read that part again. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garments. Why? For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. God just said, listen, if a woman wear pants, if a man wear dress, it's an abomination to me. I don't like it. Right. Bring it out. And you want to know? You know what God? How God feels about that? Give me Surah 15. Uh, 15 verse. Uh, what's that? 13. 15 verse 13. Surah chapter 15 and verse 13. The Lord hated all abomination. The Lord hated what? All abomination. So when it said before, all that do so is an abomination to God. What does, how does God feel about abominations? The Lord hated all abomination. That's what the Bible says. He huh? He destroyed a whole city for it. That's right. Exactly. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And guess what? We're at Sodom and Gomorrah today. It's the same thing today. Pride Month. They teach him um, transgender pride in the school system. It's the same thing today. So, we, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? It got rained down with fire and brimstone. That's right. So, what do you think is going to happen today? The same exact thing. You think nuclear missiles are being built for no reason? You think Palestine, the land of, of the Israelis, Russia, China, Iran, you think they got nuclear uh, missiles for no reason? It's to blow this place off the face of the earth. That's right. And all the works they're in. Every works in this society, in this world, in America, South America, North America, is going to be destroyed. And that's why we're out here. We're out here to give warning. We're out here to say, exactly, we're out here to say, give me Ezekiel 3 verse 17. we out here to save souls. Right. And whoever listens, all praises. Whoever don't, your judgment is waiting. That's right. That's it. Judgment day is the day of the Lord. It's the day when this world is destroyed. That's judgment day. And where are you going to be in that day? Black woman, black man, where are you going to be in that day? Are you going to be smoking weed? Bring it out. Ah, are you going to be sexing all over the place? Bring it out. Let's keep, I'll uh, read that. Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman. So God has made the black man a watchman. That's who we are. We are the watchmen for the people. Right. That's why we're supposed to be governing our communities. Because we are the watchmen. Read that. Unto the house of Israel. Unto the best man Native Americans. We are the watchmen for y'all. Read on. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning and from give, me. And give the people warning. Give my people warning from God. From his word. Read on. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. That's what the Bible says. All the, all the Israelites that's in sin, that's in wickedness, they shall surely die. Shall surely die. When God, has God ever said something and did not happen? Everything that God said happened. That's right. Everything that he said happened. 
He told Noah, listen, I'm about to flood this whole world. I'm about to destroy this whole world. You better build that ark. And what happened? It happened. He, exactly. God told Lot, listen, you better get your family out of here because I'm about to destroy this place. Did it happen? It happened. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with